So in this video, we will explore and explain how we can use this Earth and satellite simulation to understand geostationary Earth orbits. So after you launch the Java file, you can see that on the left panel, there is a slider bar to control the a level of zoom that is enabled for the students to view the three-dimensional view of the Earth and its satellite. So there are several checkboxes, for example, the geostationary Earth axis and satellite axis to enable the students to explore these various concepts. And the different modes will allow you to explore what is a geostationary orbit. So after you click play, you can see that as you click on the mouse and drag along, you can see what is being displayed is a geostationary orbit around Singapore. And as you step through the simulation, you'll be able to see as the time reaches 24 hours and exactly the satellite will have made one revolution along the equator of the Earth. And as you pan around, you can see that even the free body diagram checkbox allows the student to visualize the free body diagram on the forces uh, according to Newton's third law equal opposite and on different bodies. So for mode 2, as you explore, you can see that mode 2 allows the student to visualize geostationary orbits and compare it with the geostationary orbit which is in red, that is around Singapore and the actual satellite is around the continent of Africa. This is around the continent of America and it's also still geostationary. As you can see from the simulation, you can pan around. And as you step through, you again you get 24 hours as the time required to make one full revolution. Now the other options are not geostationary. For example, option number four, you can see that the satellite now travels, although in the same equator plane of Earth, but now in the opposite direction to the rotation of the Earth. So even though this is has the period of 24 hours. This is not deemed to be geostationary as you can see that the spot that is permanently above the equator for the satellite is always changing. Therefore, we deem it as non-geostationary because it ref reference to the surface of the Earth. So for mode 5 and 5.1, they are quite similar. 5.1, in, in this current mode, you can see it is the satellite is now orbiting at a radius greater than the geostationary orbit and it is traveling slower as you can probably see from the simulation the time for it to take to make one full revolution is double that of a geostationary orbit and as you come to a one full revolution you can again step through the simulation to see that the time is roughly 48 hours to make one full round Now for mode 6 and 6.1, you can play with it and understand what are some of the common revolutions or, or orbits that are not geostationary in, in general. So you can see this is a non-geostationary orbit and it is traveling at an elliptical plane which is not along the equator of the Earth. And you can see from the yellow line that the point of the satellite that it makes on the Earth's surface is always changing. Therefore, this is considered to be a non-geostationary orbit. Now, for number seven, this is an orbit that is in general not possible uh, if you only rely on the forces of gravity to enable the motion because in this particular orbit, this is intended for discussion that as you can see that the satellite is actually making one revolution so it shares the same characteristics of 24 hours but not in the equator plane but it is considered to be geostationary because if you observe as you play with the simulation you can see that the point is permanently above a particular point on earth therefore by definition it could be geostationary but this simulation is made to let you see that this is actually not geostationary